Hi. All right, you can all stop <laughs> tweeting me and emailing me about the Xiaomi Mi Air Charger. We're gonna take a look at it and six reasons and more why it's guaranteed to fail. Just like all the other wireless charging technologies that we've looked at here. U-Beam, now called Sonic Energy. Oh God, let's, let's not go to U-Beam. It's an EV Log fan favorite. Uh, the infrared We Charge system. We've got Energy, anyone remember that from like 10 years ago? Uh, Air Vault, which was a Kickstarter-y thing. We've got Energist, they made it to the stock market. Um, and so it's just plummet in right down as it should because it's never going to be practical. Ossia and there's like probably a dozen different wireless like phone charging technologies. It's the holy grail. Everyone keeps trying to develop a new wireless charging system for phones. Why? Anyway, let's get into it. Six reasons and more why this thing is guaranteed to fail and be impractical. It Basically, it, it's not going to happen, okay? So first of all, does this uh, Xiaomi Mi air charging technology actually work? Well, yes, it does. All of these uh, charging technologies will work in quote marks, but it's all about all the issues to do with this about practicality of the thing. They're going to guaranteed to fail because they're simply impractical. So here's the promo video for it. And as you can see, it's this huge, gigantic box, a big cube that you actually sit on the floor of your living room. It's targeted for in-home use and it's designed to, you know, you walk around with your shoe phone in your house because you're still, you know, when you want to come home, you just want to be staring at your shoe phone, right? Because that's what people do these days. Jeez, I don't know, like there's a world happening around you. Anyway, right, you're walking around and it's just magically charging as you walk past it, as you sit in there, etc. Woo! And it uses millimeter frequencies. We'll get into that. And it's got 144 antenna on it. Here's a photo of the antennas. We'll also get into that. And it's got uh, 14 antennas in the receiver for the phone. But you'll notice that in none of this uh, promotional video do they actually show you like a real phone actually working. So this could be complete pie in the sky stuff. I'm sure there's a working prototype somewhere, but I don't think this is, it doesn't seem to be anything close to release. So it actually has position technology because it needs to know in your room where your phone is so that it can then uh, beam steer, beam form the millimeter frequency RF uh, energy to the phone that you're actually holding. So it claims to have 144 antennas in the uh, on the transmit side and 14 in the phone side. So okay, it's some sort of millimeter wavy type RF uh, power transfer technology with active uh, beam forming. So okay, this is how the new uh, 5G technology works. So it's basically a similar sort of thing to modern 5G uh, cell tower technology, but designed to deliver a, like instead of data to your phone, it's designed to deliver power. So it's almost certainly operating in some sort of continuous wave uh, system, which actually is a good thing because that can actually make it more efficient if you optimize it for uh, continuous wave transmission. So if you just put in all of your power into the uh, beam just to transmit uh, to the device to power it, then you can actually design your amplifiers to be more efficient, you can design your antennas to be more efficient, and design the whole system to be more efficient. But just just like all the other wireless technologies we've looked at here, efficiency is the killer in this whole thing. So they claim to be able to deliver five watts up to, sev up to several meters uh, from the device, which isn't much. I mean, just the other side of the lab is more than a couple of meters. This is not a very big lab. This is like, you know, like big McMansions these days. It's not going to go far at all. So anyway, five watts up to a couple of meters. Now here is where the efficiency comes in. Okay, five watts is in like fairly slow charging technology for a phone. Like with your ultra rapid uh, chargers these days, it's like, yeah, an order of magnitude slower than what's currently on the market. Well, that's one of the things we'll look at. So the question is, how much energy do you have to put into this system, i.e. draw from the mains power point that this thing's plugged into to deliver five watts into your shoe phone under ideal conditions. Well, it turns out this is not necessarily my area of expertise, so I called up a mate of mine, Sharia from the Signal Path. His YouTube channel's linked in down below. Absolutely fantastic, cutting edge, 
all about he's one of the world's leading millimetre wave uh, researchers at Bell Labs. And I've done a uh, Amp Hour podcast with him, linked in down below as well, where we talk about 5G uh, technology. It goes for an hour, it's fantastic, highly recommend it. And both of us came to pretty much uh, the same conclusion that if you can put five watts into your shoe phone at a couple of meters using anything less than 500 watts input power into the transmitter, then, well, it's gonna be some remarkable whiz-bang technology. Now, here's a photo of the antennas used in this, and uh, Sharia says these uh, look like uh, dual polarized circular patch antennas. Nothing special there at all, fairly ordinary, and he says 144 is not many. So, uh, to get uh, the narrow beam forming required, requires a large number of antenna, and 144 doesn't give you a very narrow uh, beam forming beam. So, right there, it's like, pretty limited. And you'll notice that they're actually through hole. You can see the pin coming through and Sharia says there's absolutely no way that this is going to work from a signal integrity point of view at millimeter, millimeter wavelength, which is what his research is. So that'd be uh, 28 gigahertz and beyond. So he seems to think that this, this actual antenna that they show here in their video is uh, probably more likely around the five gigahertz ISM band, something like that. So it's much lower than millimeter wave. Anyway, Sharia says there's no way that you can uh, construct an antenna like that and have it work at millimeter wave uh, frequencies. It's just, it's the wrong technology. So how much loss are you going to get in the system? Well, that depends uh, upon your uh, path loss in air. And I've looked up some data here and it seems to be about uh, 32 dB minimum at, for one meter. That's just one meter. And then of course it drops further with uh, more distance. But then you've got uh, your transmitter antenna gain and then you've got your receiver antenna gain as well. So when you combine those two, uh, Sharia seems to think uh, probably in the order of like 15 dB loss, something like that because they are getting some sort of obvious uh, benefit from the antenna gain because at five watts uh, output, if you looked at just the uh, transmission loss of the air itself, if you were losing like 32 dB or more there, you're looking at like 1500 times. So you'd need like five kilowatts plus to put into this system to receive five watts on your shoe phone. And then you've got the efficiency of the uh, receiver as, as well. And Sharia says if you can do 50% uh, efficiency at like five gigahertz, that kind of, uh, you know, really, that's really difficult to do because you've got to convert the RF, you've got to rectify that and convert it into DC. So he's being generous and saying, well, you know, there's at least 50% loss there right off the bat, just in the reception. We're going to be generous and say 500 watts is the input power required to get five watts into this device. That's under ideal condition. Like in practice, it's probably more than that. And there's a reason why the box has to be this big like this. It's gonna have a large power supply in it. And then you get to the uh, practicalities of the box. If you've got uh, just 144 antenna, I assume that's just one array because that's already an incredibly small array for uh, beam forming at these sort of uh, frequencies. So, uh, is that only on one side of the box or is it on three sides of the box because it's got like a, a wanky little LCD uh, display on one side so presumably there's nothing there and it, does it actually have one of those on each side or is there some sort of like internal panel that just like rotates with a motor or something like that and then scans around? I don't know. Anyway, there's some sort of technology that uh, allows them to uh, actually find the phone. So the uh, the could phone could actually be like maybe transmitting an incredibly uh, small power signal and then they could be multiplexing that array um, to actually do some reception as well. And then they can like locate where the phone is. But anyway, Sharia says um, uh, even the best uh, phased array like this, you're only gonna get about a 60 degree beam angle. It's not gonna go completely 90 degrees. It's not gonna go behind. So if you've only got one flat surface like that, you're only going to get 60 degrees either side. So it, it's not huge. I mean, this is not just going to magically, uh, you know, fill the entire room. So it's got to actually be receiving about 10 watts 
at the phone uh, just because of the 50% uh, efficiency losses in the RF to DC rectifier uh, to do this. So it's, you know, it, it's even worse than what we're making out here. So it could be like a uh, best case you need to transmit like a kilowatt instead of 500 watts. And Sharia says that uh, trying to rectify uh, 10 watts at like you know, five gigahertz, something like that, <laughs> that starts to give you the heebie-jeebies. That's actually really big RF power level for rectification like that. So regardless of how they're actually implementing this uh, technically, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it works, but <laughs> we have to get into all the reasons why it's never going to work in the market. It's simply not practical and it's probably not even ethically right to actually uh, develop and try and market and sell a product that's going to be this inefficient to dry to just to charge your mobile phone it's just oh, ridiculous anyway let's get into the six uh, reasons why this thing it just simply is not going to be practically in the market it's not going to be a practical product it's guaranteed to fail if this whiteboard looks familiar it's because I practically copied the whole six points from our good friends U-Beam over here, my U-Beam debunking biggest shock horror wireless charging technology has the same issues regardless of what technology you use, whether it's ultrasound, whether it's infrared, whether it's uh, like air energy that was like Wi-Fi, <laughs> or any of the RF ones, the Energis, the Ossia, and this new um, Mi air charging thing. It, it doesn't matter. It comes down to the same practical uh, design, engineering, and basically marketing considerations. Let's go. First of all, we've got the efficiency. The efficiency will be bad. Bad, right this is bad for the planet imagine if everyone got one of these for their homes 500 watts maybe a kilowatt or something like that to maybe get you know five watts at best into your phone oh come on so right off the bat there that is just a huge no this product you should not buy this product even if it worked and even even if it existed and you could buy it you should not buy it because you don't want a huge amount of power and how much standby power does this thing take it's not going to be like half a watt like a little uh you know chi charger pad and wall wart and things like that this is the reason that we have regulations for these sorts of things we've got the you might have heard like the energy star compliance the uh, meps uh, regulations there like australian and new zealand one other countries leave it in the comments down below if your country's got something similar Where where, uh, you know, the efficiency of the product matters. You can't actually sell a product into certain markets unless it meets efficiency requirements. And this is a huge reason why all these switching uh, plug packs, they had to get them under a watt, uh, for example, because all these uh, war warts, you know, stuck everywhere. You have, you know, dozens of them throughout your home. They actually use a lot of like passive power consumption when they're sitting there idle doing nothing. Imagine what this huge box is doing. Unbelievable. So right there, the ethics of everyone using uh, like this huge, you know, 500 watt to plus uh, box to just charge their phone at a like at snail's pace, really. Five watts is nothing these days. Then we've got the cost of the thing, the physical size of it, the weight of it. You've got to ship this thing. You've got to design, you've got to build all the plastics and everything. So all of this, uh, to design this huge product, that's like orders of magnitude inefficient. I was like, oh, why? Then you've got the size. Who the heck wants this huge box like this in your house? And as we've discussed, you probably need like multiple ones of these in multiple rooms. It cost like multiple boxes, multiple sizes. They sit in your home. It's got, if you have a look at one of the photos here, it's weird. It's got some sort of like a uh, transparent thing around the bottom. Some other photos don't show it. It's got a little thing in the middle. It looks like a little strobe light or something. Is that something to do with the positional technology or something? I don't know. They're going to integrate bloody Bluetooth speakers into it or something maybe it's a subwoofer fourth one safety and legality now um, Sharia says uh, that potentially this can be safe because if you want to know about the safety of the true safety of 5g systems listen to the podcast that we did and we talk about all about uh, 5g technology how it works and how it's actually safe because it doesn't actually penetrate the skin it's really difficult uh, to penetrate anything that's why 5g technology needs so many towers and so close because it, yeah it can penetrate stuff but then and the attenuation drops and then your efficiency drops to bugger all. So they do say in their marketing for this thing that it can penetrate objects, but yeah, penetrate, they don't tell you what the attenuation is. <laughs> Just imagine, you've got your phone like this, it's ideally 
positioned so that it's you know flat, it's facing the uh, receiver, and your, your beam width, okay, you, let, let's say your antenna array takes up half, there's got to be 14 uh, elements on here, so let's just say it takes up half your phone. Let's just assume that it's round like this, we're not going to talk about side low, we're not going to talk about all the ins and outs of it, but let's assume that it's round like this, and because of the 50% minimum rectification uh, efficiency in this thing, um, you've got to pump at least 10 watts into an area this size. So if I'm holding my shoe phone like this and the transmitter's over there, I don't really want 10 watts of focused RF energy pumping into me like this. No thanks. But anyway, Sharia, one of the world's leading experts on this, seems to think that he's, he's going to give it to them that they can make it safe. And the legality of it, having a 500 watt transmitter and see once again he's willing to grant them uh, that they can so you get FCC approval they can get all the other approvals and everything else so like we'll give that to them right let's just say it can be made safe and it can be made legal number five how people actually use phones you hold your phone in your hand like this right I you know, you hold it in the bottom like this so let's just say that the center array has to be up the top right then well okay um, what happens if the sensors right there right down the camera and we're, we're, we're like this we're all good it works you know you can test this in the lab and show it to the marketing people and they go yay let's sell it it works and then the engineers go like this oh doesn't work anymore or you're gonna put your shoe phone in your pocket, you're gonna have it in your bag, or you're just gonna, like everyone does, lie it on the table, like this, be it a kitchen table or whatever. Like, it's, it's not gonna get anything. The attenuation's gonna be so enormous, you'd be getting like milliwatts into the thing, not five watts, which is already low enough. Oh, and I think it's important that I actually put up there, like if you get five watts out of this thing and 500 watts in, that's, you know, 1% efficient, just saying. And the final nail in the coffin for this thing is the competition. Your phone already has Qi Charger built into it. It's not the best thing, but it works. It's already built in. Whereas this thing requires you to have another case which you put on the outside of your phone. And then it's got to like plug into your USB or then it's got to be like built into the phone. So they'd have to uh, tee up with the manufacturers and they're not going to give up the Qi charging. So they're going to have to have the 14 array elements built into the phone as if already our phones weren't chock full of already other uh, stuff. And so you've got to integrate 14 antenna in there as well as the big uh, Qi charging coil as well. And uh, no, God, no. Anyway, Qi is cheap. Right? You can get like five bucks delivered. Delivered! And sure it's not got the best alignment, but it, it works, you know, you can get better Qi charging pads. Apple have the new magnetic wanky thing to try and put it in place to get extra efficiency. Anyway, these things already exist, they're already built into your phone, they're already a pretty, Qi is pretty uh, efficient, like it's like up in the order of like, you know, 70%, uh, 80%, something like that. It's pretty darn good. And then you've got to compete against the other rapid charging uh, technologies available. Like, it, it all comes down to how you practically use this thing. You know, you come home, your phone's low, you're not just going to sit there on the couch slowly charging at 5 watts, being bombarded with all this RF energy and hoping that you get your 5 watts uh, charging. It's just, it's, because it's not going to show it on your phone, it's just going to show, oh, charging, yeah, at what rate? You know, so it, it's going to be an absolute crapshoot, whereas if you know, if you come home uh, at night and you just plug it in with your, um, to your rapid uh, charger, it's like it's done in like an hour or something like that. Or you just leave it overnight and it's on a slow charger, on a wired charger or your uh, Qi charging pad. And you know in the morning it's done. No worries. There's basically no usage scenario for this thing. This is why even if it works, it's just going to completely fail. There is no point to this product. It's ethically bad. The cost, the size, the safety, and the legalities of the thing, even and then get that working. But it's how you physically use your phone. Only under certain circumstances will it actually work. It reminds me of the U-Beam demos where they're, you know, holding the phone like this and it's got the big tracking target on. Look, it works. Ah, oh, yeah, we're facing the transmitter like this. <sighs> This, this whole thing, why, why does this exist? I, I, I don't know. It's just, no. So yes, you are right to be skeptical about this thing because it's, 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 I'd be surprised if it even makes it to market. It's just, like, you can't actually buy it. It's just marketing wanker 101. So the Xiaomi Mi Air charging, it's going to fail, guaranteed. Like, 
don't even worry about this. Just throw it away with all the existing uh, wireless charging technologies for mobile phones. It just, no, nah, pointless. It's never going to be a thing. So I hope you liked that. If you found it useful, and if you did, please give it a big uh, thumbs up. As always, discuss down below or over in the EV Blog forum where there's a dedicated thread uh, for each video. And check out my alternative platforms as well. I'm not just on the YouTubes. And let us know in the comments down below if you want uh, Sharia and myself to actually get on a Skypey Zoom call, whatever the kiddies are using these days, and uh, talk about, um, do just have a discussion on uh, this sort of 5G technology. Let us know. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.